Hey guys, Mrs. Delvaya here. So today we are going to practice our strategy of box method for multiplication. So the first step when multiplying with the box method is you have to break apart all the place values in your numbers. So in the first number, 156, I have 100, I have 50, and I have six. They're held together by a plus sign because when you put them back together, you still have the value of 156. We are multiplying by the value of just four. There's only one place value here. Here we had three place values. That's why we had three values. Okay, now that we're ready and we broke apart our, um, our values, we have to draw a box. So I see I need three spaces for 156. So I already know in my box, I'm going to need enough spaces for 100, 50, and 6 to be multiplied separately, okay? Then I have 4. I'm going to multiply by 4. This might look familiar to the division uh, box method, but in division, we have the inside number, and we're dividing by 4. So we have to see what is four times something gives me the inside number. But here we're just multiplying to get the inside number. All right. So now that I have 156 times four, I'm now going to start multiplying those values. Four times 100, that's simple. I know four times one is just four and I have two zeros. So four times 100 is 400. Four times 50. Hmm. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I do know four times five is 20 and there's a zero. Remember that trick I taught you guys? You add that zero on at the end. It's a base 10 number. So four times five is 20, but four times 50 is 200. And then four times six, lastly, is 24. Now, what are these inside numbers called? Those are the partial products. In other words, partial answers, right? They're the the product right here, that is the answer. These are part of the answer. They're partial products. I want the the final product. So we have to add these together, add them up to find out what the final product is. So 400 plus 200 plus 24 is going to be 4 plus 0 is 4, zeros plus 2 is 2, and 400 plus 200 is 600. So my final product is 624. Okay, so we multiplied by one number here. I want to multiply by a two-digit number, not a one-digit this next time. So let's try this again. Actually, let's do one more that is um, a one-digit number by three-digit numbers. So let's do one more example. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do a three digit number by one digit again. So I'm gonna do 221 times six, okay? So this first number here, I have one, two, three place values. I have ones, a tens, and a hundred. So I need to break those place values apart. I have 200, I have 20, and I have one, 221. It's just like how you read it. The reason we have to break it apart, guys, is we're, because we're going to multiply them separately to make the process easier instead of this big number, 221 times 6. Now, this number, 6, is one digit. It has one place value, which is just 1s. 6, that's all. Now, I need to draw a box to multiply this. I need to multiply all of 221 by 6. Therefore, my box needs to have three separate spaces for 221, okay, 200, wherever there's a plus sign, there's a line, 20, 1. You could also write this, and that'll be a tip for you. If you write 200 in expanded form, 20, and 1 in expanded form, wherever there's a plus sign, there's a line down underneath, just like that. And then you just draw your box, okay? I only have a six that I'm multiplying by, six. So I only have one space that I need six in. I don't need another second space down here underneath. 
Therefore, we are ready to begin multiplying. 6 times 200. Hmm, I know 6 times 2 is 12, and I could just tag those two zeros on at the end. So that's 1,200. 6 times 20. Well, I know 6 times 2 is 12 again, but there's a zero that I have to tag on at the end, so it's 120. And lastly, and simple, 6 times 1 is just 6. Now, these are my partial products. They're part of the product, part of the final answer. This is the product, the final answer. I need to put them all together and add them up to find out what the total is. So 0 plus 0 plus 6 is 6. 2 and 0, uh, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 1,000 alone by itself is just 1. The final product is 1,326. All right, now, now let's do, we practice three digits being multiplied by one digit. Now I want to do two digit numbers multiplied by two digit numbers. So that's what we're going to do two problems together that have those numbers. All right, so I'm going to do, let's do hmm, 48 times 12. That seems like a good number. Okay, that was 48 times 12, okay? All right, so the same step. The first step in the multiplication box method is you have to break apart the place values in each number to find out what are the values being multiplied. So in 48, I know I have a tens place and a ones place. There's four tens, which is 40, and eight ones. Just like we read, 48. 12 has two place values because it's two digits. It has a 10 and it has two ones. 10 and plus two is still 12 when you put it back together. If the number is not the same when you put these back together, you are incorrect. All right, so now I know in my first digit I have two, I can just start writing. It doesn't matter which one I write first. I can write 40 plus eight or I can write 10 plus two first. It doesn't matter where you put them. Wherever there's a plus sign, there's a line. Okay, here is my box. However, two pl uh, 10 plus 2. Okay, I cannot fit 10 plus 2 in one space. No, you can't do that. There's a plus sign there. I need, I can do that, but here, I need to make this bigger. So pretend this is how it looks, right? Okay, so I have 10 plus 2. I have 10 plus 2. Uh-oh, I can't fit two that uh, place values, two digit numbers in one box. Wherever there's a plus sign, you need to draw another line. If I have two digits here, I need two boxes. They need to be separated to be multiplied separately. Now I have 48 being multiplied by 12. They're just broken down into each place value, tens and ones. Okay, let's start multiplying. Whatever goes in this box is right up above and to its side. This box is going to be above and the number to the side, outside, of course. So now we have 10 times 40. 10 times 40, hmm, I know 1 times 4 is 4. Oops, hold on. I want to do this with red. So I know 1 times 4 is 4, and then I have two zeros that I have to tag on. So 10 times 40 is 400. I know 10 times 8 is 80. I could have just said 1 times 8 is 8 and then tag that 0 on. Okay, now let's go to the second column. 2, what am I multiplying 2 by? Well, it's whatever's above. Not this number, that's a product. It's whatever number is on the outside above. So 2 times 40. 2 times 40, well, I know 2 times 4 is 8, and I can tag that 0 on right at the end. 80, 2 times 40 is 80. 2 times 8 is 16. Remember, these are partial products. They are part of the final product up here. So we need to add them all up and find out what is the total product, the final answer. 480, 80, and 16. 0, 0, yeah, that's a 0. 0 and 6 is 6. 0 plus a plus 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17, carry the 1, 
four plus one is five. This is 576. Okay. After you guys do the work, you can absolutely use your calculator to check your answers, but you need to get this process down because on a test or in life, you're not always going to have a calculator. And this is a skill that you're going to need to know in life to multiply numbers. You will use this when you're at the grocery store in a job. There's going to be many experiences where you have to master this skill. So you are using a calculator to check your work, not to do the work. Okay, let's do one more that is two digits by two digits, okay? So let's do um, 62 multiplied by eight, okay? If you don't know your eight multiplication facts, you already know what you should have out, your multiplication fact resource sheet. I also have posted that resource on the math tab this entire school year. You guys have your math resource on the math tab on PowerSchool. It's on the right side of the, of the website. All right, so my hand's getting a little shaky here. It's getting tired of holding the camera. We're going to do this last one together. So 62 times 8. Oops, I need two digits. I'm sorry, times 88, silly me. I need to break apart my values. I see two place values in each number, a tens and ones. So 62 is just like it sounds, 62. Six tens, two ones. 88 is just like it sounds, 88. You see that? 80, eight tens is 80, eight ones is eight. When I put them back together, I get 88 and 62. So I am correct. Okay, I can start with whatever one. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna start with the second one this time just to show you it's the same thing. 88, wherever there's a line, there's a, I'm sorry, plus sign, wherever there's a plus sign, there's a line. And 62 on this side. Wherever there's a plus sign, there's a line. I have two boxes for two place values. All right, let's start multiplying. 60 and 80, whoa, 60 times 80. Well, I know six times eight is 48. And if you didn't know that, you have your resource sheet. And then I have to tag on not one zero, but two zeros. Okay, now 60 times eight, well, I know six times eight again is 48, but this time I just have one zero to tag on because it's not 80, it's just eight. Okay, now the bottom two, what do I multiply two by? Not this number, that's a product. I multiply two by the number above outside, 80. Two times 80, well, I know two times eight is 16, and there's a zero that I have to tag on, so two times 80 is 160. And then two times eight is again, 16. <sighs> well, that did not come out very nice. 16, okay. These are partial products. I want the final product. So we need to add it together to find out what is our final answer, our final product. A product in multiplication is an answer. Just like a quotient in division is a answer. Okay, zero plus zero plus zero plus six is six. 0 plus 8 plus 6 plus 1. Well, I know 8 plus 6 is 14. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 14 plus 1 more is 15. So it's the same as 8 plus 7. 15, you carry the 1. Don't forget. 8 plus 4. This is in, we have to line everything up so we make sure we're adding correctly. Well, I know 4 plus 1 is 5 plus another 1 is 6. And 6 plus 8 is 14. Carry another 1. 4 plus just 1 is 5, so it's 5,456. 56. All right, guys, make sure you're using your multiplication resource if you don't know any of your math facts. And do your best with this assignment.